Now uh, we are, I'm going to introduce uh, Professor Sandian Shou. Uh, he is uh, from uh, Seoul National University Hospital in Korea since uh, 2019. Uh, his expertise in uh, endoscopic stone surgery and endoscopic prostate surgery. Uh, Professor Sun promoted uh, stone surgery in uh, Korea and uh, East uh, Asia. He is going to present about uh, uh, retrograde mitral surgery, robotic. And Professor Sun, please. Korean slowly to bow to and express some respect to other people, especially for other people. So I just want to express my respect to you. And thank you for uh, having me today. Thank you for having me today. And uh, this is my first time visit in Kuwait. Thank you for uh, having an opportunity to share my experience about the body. Luckily, we are going to with you. And, well, yeah, I'm working for the Seoul National University. And it has some main hospitals in Seoul and two branch hospitals in Grand Medical Center and the Seoul National University Kundam Hospital and another healthcare center in Gangnam district. As you know, the Gangnam style. So it means this south part of the Han River in this. And so uh, we are in collaboration with SKSH UAE. Uh, I, I, I have no idea about the collaboration of um, the new Jara hospital in Kuwait with my hospital, but I hope everything is okay. Well, um, you can see my uh, topic, uh, uh, my interest in my stone clinic and stone lab here. Um, so, and actually, there's no exaggeration, exaggeration to say that all of these items were originated from the recent development of flexible endoscopy. With the recent technological advancement in endurology, actually, RIS has become a very popular procedure for treating renal stones. And along with the introduction of new laser systems and high quality um, flexible endoscopy, the treatment indications for RIRS has, uh, have expanded to including big renal stones larger than 2 cm. This is a graph of data from 2009 to 2013 showing minimally invasive treatment in Korea is fastly increasing. And at that time, the shockwave with the Trixi and Danis and Nephrolithotomy, PCNL was the main procedure in the treatment of stone uh, in Korea. But when I started uh, plastic retroscopic surgery in 2011 and maintained it for more than two years, I was confident, okay, I, I, I could overcome the learning curve of using the plastic retroscopes without significant damage uh, to maintain the clinical volume in my place. And then the number of cases started to uh, increase explosively. So my routine practice was expanded from the simple monotherapy of flexible retroscopy or PCNL to flexible retroscopy plus PCNL uh, for managing four categories in the field of endoluminal and urology, such as uh, renal and urethral stone, urethral stricture, epithelial carcinoma, and so on. I mean the endoscopic inoculation of prostate. So I published the q analytic data about how a beginner could overcome the learning curve of RIRS without any good mental ground devices. And some major broadcasts in Korea showed huge interest in it. And then I saw this article um, as being a catalyst for explosively changing endoscopic stone surgery in South Korea. So in the year 2015, many patients from all over the country started to visit my place. And I had to strictly, strictly select the patients regarding the medical conditions because of the space of the patient in my hospital. And surgical cases and the surgical difficulty increased together and the proportion of complicated renal you know, stones has increased accordingly. And in the year around 2015 and 16, I did 
almost 20% of all cases in Korea like this. So, actually I would like to ask of you whether you are satisfied with your current practice of RIRs in your place. Okay, then I can do my RIRs without any significant damage or something else with significant complications, but many people are not satisfied with their uh, RIRs techniques, of course not. I can do it, but actually the RA expectations are usually a clear bit of field without any bleeding during RIRs, but the reality can be quite different. So if the pressure or that radiation flow is high, we can see many, we can see the hematuria because of uh, the high outlet resistance and, and the ureters, so and the pressure can be increased with the history of pile nephritis and with the result of the steep calicine system. Then the fragmented stones can hide behind the hematuria and the clots. And the kidney anatomy in the endoscopic system actually is not so intuitive because they don't lie perfectly on the same plane of the coronal section of the patients. And the upper pole lies towards the patient's back and tilt immediately to the spine. And furthermore, we have to recognize that the upper pole posterior and the mid pole posterior calyces are in the most independent area, quite close to the patient's back. And what, all, what are all this going on? Everybody knows. And then we need to systematically navigate the calyces system from the lower anterior calyces, the highest part, highest part of the kidney. And to the, the to the most dependent calyx, as I as I already told you, I mean just the, the, the mid posture calyx and the upper posture calyx, where the fragments, stone fragments, I mean, can be collected through the stone fragmentation. So, but if, if there is any large stone in the lower calyx, we have to do like we have to do RIRs like this possible awkward position posturing, just. We need uh, sometimes a quick, very long operating time, and we may feel uh, um, severe muscle fatigue. So, how about the stone fragmentation technique? The uh, scanning is uh, fast, accurate, and okay. Our scanning technique is fast and accurate. We can expect high stone free rate and a very short operative time. But if we want to, if, if you are a duster, well, just we need we may need some relatively long operative time, and so many people still, many international masters are still discussing about what is your time limit, time limit of your operative time. So, just in my case, I'm just ninety minute, or just one twenty minute can be okay in this bilateral cases, because we still feel the many muscle fatigue in the shoulder and in our arms and. The laser fiber lamp is 1.5 millimeter, and just our assistance is very busy to arrange the laser fiber on the surgical table. If we want to change it to the basket, and we can change it to the laser fiber again, our assistant is very busy. Expensive, right? 
And this, my second priority is the digital class of URS. And recently, the, 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 the level of the CMOS uh, technology has become very high, and we can enjoy a very high quality new system with digital, even with uh, digital flexible disposable wearable skills. So, but sometimes we, we cannot buy all, all the best devices in our place, and we have to. Sometimes you have to choose, and uh, some you know, it's just an unhappy choice uh, with limited resources in our place. And now we are expecting a newly developed high efficiency laser machine and the rough machine, the available high tech volume laser machine of 121 and all of the different specifications like, like MOSES 1 and 1 and 2. But just do the five laser are commercially available in some countries in tech that they are unfortunately not in Korea. But just do the five laser, you know, it uses as long thin and just uh, Thulium silicon fiber as the active laser medium, and it's, it's quite uh, it sh it's showing very high efficiency with the 20, the 220 watt uh, electrical power, and it also has upgrade modes of the continuous and plus uh, modes. And many of us are expecting more dust that more dust production can be helpful for facilitating suction function and uh, well, pop testing that time can be shortened. So we don't have any much real more uh, evidence about this. We are expecting. And another hurdle is the respiratory movement. Because re respiratory movement can make some problems even in chocolate with the tripsy and the surgical endoscopic surgery as well. And it can affect the movement of the kidney and the result of the stomach movement. So we are anticipating a new device to maximize the efficiency of pop dusting stone fragmentation regarding uh, respiration. So I think an automated movement of the flexible retroscopy or stand still kidney can be already just answers, but we still don't have any solution for this yet. So, well, this, um, it can be a, a word of exaggeration, but I want to talk about the conventional RIRS surgery that just, yeah, the fibrotic even get yeah, just heavy fiber optic flexible retroscopes in the era of technological advancement. So what made the conventional RIRS be? For most surgeons, conventional RIRS surgery uh, provides many imbalances, including surgeon's factors, patient's factors, surgical technical factors, and limitation of the devices. But yeah, as I already told you, not all the hospitals can can buy the best devices, so we have to find the best choice with the limited resources. So how can you overcome? The point is, how can we overcome the demerits of the limitation of the conventional RRR? So, well, I'm not sure whether the robotic platform can be the final answer for this, but it can be one of the options or one of the solutions. That's your interior. We have some options to manage the patients of urolithia systems. You can, you can see this uh, slide. But each part of the treatment modalities is being developed, is being uh, upgraded, and we can see many new toys accordingly. It's just for yeah, several months later, we can see another toy, another device. So we have to check the, the interaction and the final results with the new toy. So very complicated. So now we feel we may. We need maybe any smart machine that can control the other devices and the surgeons want to simplify our surgical protocol and procedure and if we can get the good surgical outcomes and safety issues. So there has been evidence of less than um, 10 about robotic flexible radioscopy, but the concept is quite similar among this. And the first robot was named Sensei and it was published in 2011 in the Journal of Urology. The concept of the master and the remote slave consoles has maintained all through this evidence, all through these articles. So we can see some information about the several currently ongoing robotic RIRS systems in the, in the world and you can see the really robotic product just outside this hole. 
And the basic concept, as I already told you, of these measures is to offer an automated or economic council that controls the flexible gyroscopy and some related devices with assistance residents or warning nurses. And the flexible URS is attached to a robotic slave arm, and the muscle council controls the scope of motion, keep the flexion, laser power settings, stone size estimation, intravenous monitoring, electromagnetic cutaneous puncture, or the laser tip but projection according to the machine type. The technology level is quite different according to the company. So now they are being used uh, to humans and maybe the start of a new lease on life with future implements and enabling surgeons to perform tele-robotic flexible URS by manipulating the console probably just using our cell phones, right? But of course, everybody is worried about the lag time. Although we are using the LTE super fast in the internet, but the one, one, one second or 0.5 second lag time can be problematic in the medical field, right? So, super fast internet should be founded for just enabling and you know, they, they perform the tele robotic flexible URS surgery. So in the robotic system, the surgeon usually sits two to three meters far from the slave arm, the X-ray generator, and the surgeon don't need to bear a lab to protect against radiation exposure uh, generated by the C-arm. And the assistant surgeon or nurse stands or sits right next to the slave arm because they have to help uh, insert disposable devices such as baskets and lathe fibers. And I feel the surgeons don't need to maybe two assistants during the main procedure if the surgeons uh, get used to be familiar with the use of the robotic machine. Okay. So the far left video clip is a pop dusting technique performed by 44 the arrested and during RIRS and the late fiber you can see he's dancing around the stone and just is making some mucosal <laughs> damages to right next to the stones. But the middle one is about uh, is the video clip of my pop testing technique. I feel the laser fiber kit was quite stable, but after several minutes I had to grab the scope again just with a fixed posture I, I need to change my position just after I feel the muscle pain in my shoulder shoulder. Of course even if it, if even if it was a disposable light flexible hydroscope, the fixed posture can the fixed posture can be stressful to the surgeons. The far right video clip is the pop testing technique performed by a robotic platform. So I don't know why the screen is shut down. So when we do when we do the pop testing technique with the robotic platform. The things we have to consider is patient's respiration or just the irrigation setting. So just maybe if the robot system can have some automated functions to manipulate or to change the setting of irrigation and laser or respiration things, then all the procedure for stone fragmentation can be automatic. So this is this kind of uh, the concept like uh, cruise control for driving a car in a railroad or in the high-speed road. So the, the only thing for us to do is, I mean the cruise control is, just we, we have to let the, our, our cars to know, just we need to grab our handles to let, to, for letting our cars to know that our drivers are not sleeping. So when you do when I do the stone fragmentation with robotic platform, just cruise control can be very uh, just one of the strong points of robotic RIRS platform. But basically, it is a, a new concept. It's Da Vinci robot doesn't have any cruise control. While we do the robotic uh, prostatectomy, just we have to do everything. Of course, the robotic Da Vinci system can make some lessen the Hand travel, hand traveling, or whether we have can have some enhanced vision, but just it is not uh, it is not the same with cruise control. So some.
sometimes I, 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 so at my place I want to do the, the simultaneous surgery of, for example, left side of PCNL, right side of RIRS, or, or left side of urinary stone, and the, the bladder stone, and uh, inoculation of prostate. And I, I mean, I, I, I can let my resident uh, perform the retroscopic surgery or RIRS with this robotic system because robotic system can have a merged function, a uh, merged function for this. They can have so implemented the, this tips and tricks of masters globally can be implemented implemented in this robotic platform. So. Uh, that implement the many tips and tricks of the master setting can help our residents do perform the urethroscopic surgery or RIRS uh, while the master surgeon uh, uh, do the PCN procedure. And you can see the, the video, uh, the, the flexible URS is going into the kit uh, with the robotic system. So if the radar access shift is pro uh, properly located, Automatic, uh, automated navigation function can be visible with the running the machine and the monitor can show the detailed information I mean the enhanced region, even the surgeons don't have such a good eyesight Stone retrieval as well can be effectively performed using automated function because the robotic platform can memorize the path the surgeons need to reach the targeted stones in some uh, uh, products so, Maybe we can anticipate automated navigation through the retargeted stem. This is the tree of B in several hospital. <laughs> He's doing the animals that you know is what I'm The companies are insisting they can solve the deep average of the conventional RIRS and robotic flexible retroscopy may lead to better results for beginners, especially for surgery that would need much surgery fatigue, much radiation, more vascularity, and long testing time. But we are let's find the future together for with me from now on. The best candidates for uh, robotic RIRS can be uh, medium to large size. Uh, renal and upper urethral stones and multiple stones, small stones in the kit. Furthermore, according to the development of the devices, the indications can be expanded. So, who knows, it may be necessary for me to make a new version of the flow chart to determine the surgical method in my place according to the RIRS method between the conventional and the robotics. So, what do, what do you see the differences of robotic RIRS? What do you think? About, well, just our robotic RIRS is high point. Now we are expecting less radiation exposure, less assistance, and cruise control function with the use of robotic RIRS machine at the, at the lane at the least. And the only thing to do uh, during driving is, yeah, I already told you, to let the customer, the drivers are not slipping, right? By grabbing the handles and automated function can help surgeons to perform. RIRS surgery more competently than before. And another important thing is, now I feel why I am staying close to the development team. Some selected technologies are being added to the current robotic platform. And they are choosing some technology to implement to the robotic system. So I feel that these selected automated functions can determine the future of the robotic system and the, RI, the level of RIRs. So, don't mm -hmm. answer many. Yes, I just I have two yeah slides now. So, I am actually organizing the Asian and the Luna and the Eurology Symposium, and the next event will be held maybe on August in my place, and we will organize a hands-on session of robotic uh, RIRs platform. So. I look forward to seeing you here. So we believe technologies are speeding the RIRS and the role of RIRS is still expanding. So, well, I, I think the clinician uh, must keep up with the new technology trends and make good use of them in the rapidly changing field of endurology. Thank you for your attention and
Thank you for having me.